Well, it's October, and we usually do horror movies for the month of October, being that Halloween is at the end of the month. But I don't have a horror movie today because I haven't really watched any. I, I wouldn't have one ready anyways. I would just be reviewing some random movie that I saw quite a while ago. I did, however, watch a movie on Netflix a few days ago. A friend of mine mentioned it, and it sounded somewhat interesting. It's called Paul McCartney Really Is Dead, The Last Will and Testament of George Harrison. Now, I'm not a fan of the Beatles. What? You don't like the Beatles? Yeah, that's right. I don't like the Beatles. Never been a fan uh, just because they are a very successful band, one of the most successful rock pop groups, whatever, of all time. Does not mean I have to like them. So despite my disinterest in the Beatles as a musical group, this film did actually seem quite interesting. It's a documentary that focuses on Paul McCartney. Uh, it also focuses on George Harrison, his last will and testament. As most of you might know, any of you who know the Beatles, uh, George Harrison died in 2001, I believe. But in 1999, an attempt, someone attempted to kill him. And so after that, he was in the hospital, and he recorded his last will and testament. And he told um, something that no one knew, apparently. In 1966, George Harrison says that Paul McCartney died in a car accident. And uh, within the following years, they replaced him with a doppelganger. They found someone who was a lookalike to Paul McCartney. They performed dozens of cosmetic surgeries on him to make him look exactly like Paul McCartney. And, uh, and that's who is alive today, apparently. Now, that's the basis of the movie. This is made by, um, I don't even know who it is. It's, I, I, don't, I think it might be a small recording company or something at the beginning. It's some guy talking, saying that they got um, an ad, uh, an, a padded envelope with a tape recorder and two cassette tapes in it that have George Harrison's last will and testament on it. And it doesn't have a return date, but it does have post stamps from Great Britain. And they are located in Los Angeles, I believe. Um, I, now, first of all, why someone would have sent these people, what is so special about these people at this small recording studio or wherever it is, that what's so important about them that they would be sent this uh, highly secured information and, and to being told this years later because they apparently received these tapes in 2005 and uh, five, six years later, they have done forensic tests on the uh, voice on the tape to compare it to George Harrison's real voice, and all the tests have been inconclusive. So what we're told by this guy who talks at the beginning of the film and shows the cassette tapes and the envelope that the cassette tapes came in, he says that uh, the film is narrated by George Harrison, which I'll, uh, I'll talk on that in a minute. Um, so he talks throughout the film. And then uh, it just the video or the film is just basically clips of the Beatles and newspaper headings of the Beatles and pictures and all sorts of odd um, animation stuff. I have got to say this movie is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my entire life. It's a conspiracy, and that's all it is. It, you could do this with absolutely anybody. You could say that I died, and they did the exact same thing to me. Uh, you could say that I died um, two years ago, and. They they had a look like contest for me, and they did surgery on this guy. Um, added details to that person that that they didn't necessarily have that I have, like certain birthmarks and stuff. Um, adjust my the jaw, uh, my no their nose, whatever to look like mine, and then say that uh, it it was him. And but then years later, say that it was actually. A doppelganger and stuff and it's just more it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my entire life so this film seems interesting enough at first it's normal as it progresses but then as it progresses further it becomes the most annoying thing you've ever watched in your entire life for me anyways is first of all we're told at the very beginning of the film that George Harrison recorded these tech these cassette tapes that we're hearing throughout the entire film we're told that he recorded this like a day after he was stabbed several times after being um, after someone broke into his house and assaulted he and his wife now, throughout this entire film, this guy sounds like he is the most like professional narrator of all time. He doesn't sound affected at all. It's really high quality recording. I know you can increase recording after time, but you can't make it so crystal cr clear. And this guy just sounds so unaffected by having been stabbed a dozen times. And it's just he sounds like he was professionally trained in narrating or acting. Other things slowly got to me more and more. Um, they they have a sec there's like different chapters throughout the documentary. One the one chapter that pissed me off so much it was just so annoying. I almost stopped watching this documentary. Was they uh, they say that John, George, and Ringo tried giving their fans clues that to to like tip tip them off that um, Paul McCartney had really died. So they're saying like in songs certain lyrics they gave stuff away in um, 
on their album covers and stuff. Like there's a there are flowers on the front of one of their things, um, on the at the bottom of one of their albums. And they say it spells out Paul and stuff, and they're saying that yellow submarine is like a euphemism for a coffin or a metaphor for a coffin, whatever. And like we're all just in a land of submarines, whatever, and it shows a bunch of submarines. I'm not a big fan of the Beatles, so excuse me for not knowing every every line or whatever. But it, they they basically say that um, the yellow submarine was a coffin and stuff, and everything is just so so dumb. Like um, they say that Paul McCartney facing away is to show that uh, this guy who replaced Paul McCartney, who they call Fall, False Paul, they say that Fall faces away because he's not a true Beatles. So only the real Beatles are facing forward and looking at the camera and stuff. And like there'll be ones where everyone's facing to the right except for Fall. Fall. So I'm, fuck that. I'm not calling him Fall. Let's call him Paul. So they say that Paul's facing the left, and all the real Beatles, the original Beatles, are facing to the right. And there's just there are just so many stupid things. Like there's that rare um, album cover where they have like uh, like chopped up baby uh, dolls and stuff. Um, I don't know how many of you know that one where there are uh, two dolls on Paul McCartney's shoulders and they're decapitated and they're facing inwards. Now they say that Paul McCartney was decapitated in this car accident. And uh, so that is to signal, that is to like to give hints to uh, the Beatles fans that um, that he, he was decapitated. So they have two dolls on his shoulders with no heads, and they're facing towards his head. And it's just so dumb. There are a lot of details I could give you guys, um, but I don't really, I don't really want to give stuff away because if you're into like the conspiracy conspiracy stuff, you could watch this on your own. But um, I, essentially, they say that they covered it up because they figured that Beatles fans would probably kill themselves, like hundreds of Beatles fans would kill themselves if they knew that Paul McCartney had died. And the Beatles were pretty huge um, in the late 60s, so I could see that, uh, I could see people killing themselves over that. Um, and then they also say like um, M1, MI6 or MI5, whatever this secret organization in Great Britain was, covered it up, and that's why it's so secret, and they're trying to give hints to their fans, not straight out coming out with it. And they also say like John Lennon died because he was going to tell... Um, he was going to tell everyone the cover-up, and then a week later he was killed by that crazy fan. And they say that this Maxwell guy who worked for MI5 said that he was going to have someone kill him if they told anyone. And then George Harrison said he was going to tell someone, and then that's when he was attacked. And, like, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Um, if you're into conspiracies, definitely watch this. If you, uh, if you aren't into that, then whatever. If you're into the Beatles, watch it. But honestly, I don't recommend it. But odd enough, I've talked about this for a long time for one movie that I don't think you should watch at all. I just like talking smack on this movie because it's pure shit. So watch at your own discretion. It's awful.